praise the Lord this morning? Oh, I don't believe you. Are you ready to praise the Lord this morning? Oh, come on, lift your voices with us and sing every praise to our God. Here we go. Hey. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. family and welcome to our online service. My name is Tara Hollingsworth and I'm so excited to be able to welcome you guys into our service today. Now especially if you're new here, maybe you've been hanging out with us for the past couple weeks or maybe you're tuning in for the very first time today. We hope that you guys feel so welcome and we do want to get to know you just a little bit better. So if you're comfortable, why don't you give a little wave in the comments or drop a little emoji down there. We already have sanctuary members 
who are so excited and ready to welcome you guys today. Also, you'll notice that in the comment section, there's a link that you can click. That link will take you to our welcome form. We just want to get to know you a little bit better, but also at the bottom of that form, you'll notice that there's a few Northside organizations that we're in partnership with. We want to invite you to click any one of those, and we would love to give a donation on your behalf. So again, we hope you feel welcome here, and thank you for joining us. Now, also, there's so many ways for you guys to be able to get connected, whether you, you're new here or you've been around for a little while longer. We're right now in the middle of our series, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, and we've created some ways for you guys to engage deeper in this series with us. Now, a lot of us are going through the book and we're listening to these sermons, and we just need a space to rest and to process. So we want to invite you guys to our very first virtual worship night. We want to see you guys right here Friday, March 5th at 7 p.m. to worship with us, to take some time to just relax and be in the presence of God together. Now, we have some incredible worship leaders who are going to be leading us in worship that night. We have none other than Tanya Hughes Kendrick and also Lawrence Miles. So you guys already know it's going to be incredible. We can't wait to see you guys here. Again, that's March 5th. Make sure you mark your calendars. We want to see you there. Now, also, we know that in this series, there's a a lot coming up for us. A lot of us are experiencing a lot of deep transformation. Some of us, even the ways that we're thinking has changed a little bit. And normally we would be able to hear those stories on Sundays. We would be able to talk about those things in the lobby or even after church, you know, you grab lunch and you discuss those things together. But even though we can't do stuff like that right now, that'll come a little bit later. But for now, we still want to be able to hear from you guys. We want to know what it is that God is doing in your life. So here's what we want you to do. We want you guys to record your story, record a video of what it is that God is doing in your heart through this series and how God has been constantly transforming you. So if you are gonna do it, and we hope you do, I wanna give you a few video tips. Now the first one is we want you to make sure you record your video horizontally. So make sure it's in landscape mode. And now the next thing, and if you've been around Sanctuary for a little while, you know these already, that's the ABCs. The A is to be audible. We wanna make sure we can hear you. We wanna hear every word. The B is to be brief. And basically how it goes is the more brief you are, the more people we can hear from. And we wanna make sure that we can hear hear from all of you. So be as brief as you can and tell the full story. And then the C is to keep it Christ-centered. Now we're so excited to be able to hear from you. Um, some of you may be feeling some anxiety coming up about it. Don't worry, you can record yourself. And the good thing about being virtual is if you don't like it, you can just record it again. But either way, I'm sure it's, it's going to be incredible and we can't wait to hear from you guys. So we are still in our series, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. We're going to take a second and we're going to read our script scripture foundation for today. So if you do have your Bible, go ahead and grab that. We're going to be reading from Romans chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 13. So let's read that together. Romans 15 verse 13 says this, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Sanctuary, let's pray. God, we thank you so much, Lord God, for what you're doing in the life of our church. God, we thank you for the ways that you're transforming our hearts individually. God, the way that you're transforming us collectively, Lord Jesus, and we know that you will carry out your good work to completion. God, we thank you that you give us the ability to be healthy, Lord Jesus, not just spiritually, but emotionally and mentally and physically as well. So God, I ask that you would give us the freedom to be able to experience your love today. God, if there's anything distracting us, Lord Jesus, or anything blocking us from hearing you clearly, I just ask that your Holy Spirit would come and bring comfort, that your Holy Spirit would come and bring clarity today. We thank you, God, for your good plans. We thank you for the things that you're desiring to do. And I just ask that we would continuously walk in the vision that you've given sanctuary, walk in the purpose that you've given us. God, help us to refocus on the things that, that you have us to do here. We love you so much, Lord God, and we're grateful to be on this journey together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. This song says there's beauty in my brokenness. How many of you know out there that there is a real renewal in the joy of the Lord that goes on down in your spirit, that goes on down in your soul? And we're going to help you with this song here, okay? 
Sing it if you know it. Come on. The song says, There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. And there's freedom though you've captured me. And I have joy instead of mourning. And you give me joy. Got true love, got true love instead of and me. there's freedom though you've captured me. There's, there's freedom though you've captured me, and I've got joy. I've got joy instead of more. Come on, sing, sing. You give me joy. You give me joy down deep, down deep in my soul. 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 Come on, say that again. Say you, you, you give, give me joy. joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Come on, let's go to it again. There's beauty, there's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love, I've got true love instead of pain. And there's freedom though, there's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy, I've got joy instead of more. Let's sing that one more time. Come on, say there's beauty in my there's beauty in my brokenness. And I've got true love. I've got true love instead of and there's freedom though you've captured me. Yeah. There's freedom though you've captured me. And I've got joy, sing. I've got joy instead. Come on, sing. More. And you give me joy, Lord. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Come on, sing. You give me joy, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Come on, let's take this out. Hallelujah. And say, I've never been so, I've never been so free, caught in your love for me. And I've never been more secure knowing your so heart. You Come on, sing. I've never, never been, been so free, caught in your love for me. And I've never, never been, been more secure knowing your heart, Lord. Come on, say. I've never, never been, been so free, caught in your love, because you love me. Never been more secure oh, knowing your So heart, glad you Lord. love me. Caught in your love for me, Never Lord. Oh, and sing. You Lord, give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. So down deep in my soul. Sing. You give me joy. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Come on, man. Let's go. many of you know that he gives you joy down deep in your soul and we love him for that hallelujah we love you so much for that Lord we need you Lord we need you so much God hallelujah hallelujah to your name Jesus this part says you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy, joy forevermore. Come on, Jackson, sing it. Ooh. Oh, you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy. Oh, and you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy. Oh, you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy, joy forevermore. Say you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy. And you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy. Say you haven't seen me. You haven't seen me till you see me filled with joy. And there's 
so much joy. Oh, Come on, say you give me joy. You give me joy. Come on, down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. God of praise right there. Hallelujah. We're giving you joy everlasting. Hallelujah. We found it in you, Jesus. Sanctuary, at this time, we want to invite you to continue on in our worship service through giving. Here at Sanctuary, there's four ways that you can give with us. And the first way is you can give on our website at sanctuarycov.org. You can also give through text. You can mail in your gift. And then the last and final way is you can give through our church center app. So let's take a second and let's lift up the offering together. God, we thank you so much for this time together. God, we thank you for the blessing that it is to give, Lord Jesus. We ask that you're honored, Lord Jesus. We ask that your name is continuously lifted high, God. We thank you so much, Lord God, for the work that you've called us to. I ask that you would grant us endurance, Lord Jesus, and grant us strength. God, let us run this race with peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Sanctuary family. Thank you so much for being with us today. My name is Edrin, senior pastor here at the Sanctuary Covenant Church, and it's my honor to welcome you again into our worship service. Uh, today, as we continue in worship, I want to take one moment and acknowledge a special group of young men who are watching our service today. Uh, these young men are a part of the Rites of Passage program, um, one of the leading, if not the premier, uh, leadership development program for African-American high school seniors here in the Twin Cities. Uh, these young men have been for the last six months or so going through training and development in both personal and cultural identity, uh, growing into the young men they were created to be. And each year as a part of the Rites of Passage program, they attend a worship service at a local church, and we've been blessed over the last few years that they've chosen sanctuary as their place of worship on this special Sunday. And so we want to give a big shout out to the young men who are watching today at home, including one of our own, Evan Boyd. Uh, what's up, Evan? Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us today. And we hope that you all have been blessed by your time here at the sanctuary today. And we pray God's, bless, God's best upon you as you continue forward. On this fourth Sunday of Black History Month, Sanctuary Family, we are excited to have the opportunity to do something a little bit different on this last Sunday. Um, over the first three weeks of Black History Month, we've had a spotlight that has been separate from our sermon. But today, uh, I, I, I'm taking the opportunity, a little bit of pastoral liberty, and I'm doing what I'm calling a sermonic spotlight. And so we're going to talk about, as we've been talking about all month, the idea of black history, black liberation, and black joy. But today, we're going to focus specifically on the idea of black joy. Uh, we're going to do that through a couple of uh, 
spotlights that I'll, I'll share here in a few moments. And then we're going to have some incredible music provided to us by a local choir that you by now should know, a uh, known Minneapolis under the direction of our brother Cortland Pickens. And so we're excited uh, and invite you in this moment, this sermonic spotlight, uh, to really lean into what God might be saying to us on this topic of black joy. You may be asking yourself, what exactly is black joy? Well, I, I, I'm glad you asked that question. It's an incredible question. Uh, here's what I believe black joy is. Black joy is more than a feeling. Black joy is more like a state of mind. In fact, black joy is the essence of an entire people. Black joy is our sister Rosetta Sharp. It is Paul Robeson, it's Aretha Franklin, and James Cleveland. Black Joy is Kurt Franklin, and it is also John Coltrane. Black Joy is the gospel, but it's also the blues. It's hip-hop, it's jazz, and all the other forms of music that have flown, flowed out of those styles. It's Alvin Ailey, and Black Joy is Lorraine Hansberry. It's Gordon Parks and Gregory Hines. Black Joy is MLK, but it's also Prathia Hall. And if you don't know who she is, I want to encourage you to look her up because you should know her name. Black Joy is Brother Malcolm, but it's also Sister Betty. Black Joy is Rosa Parks, but it's also Claudette Colvin. Black Joy is a ring shout, and it is the electric slide. It's an altar call, and it is the mourner's bench. It's communion cups, but Black Joy is also red cups. It's a funeral, and it's also a second line. Black Joy is prayer time and a praise choir. It's a testimony service, and it is vacation Bible school on a 90-degree day, followed by stops at the candy lady's house. Black joy is our laughter, friends, but black joy is also our tears. It's a determination to love ourselves and not just survive, but thrive in a world that is slow to see our greatness and our beauty. Black joy is a resurrection. Black joy is revolutionary. Black joy is resistance. Black joy is refusing to be defeated. And on this last day of Black History Month in the year 2021, I invite you on a journey today as we celebrate black joy. Let's go, family. Let's go, y'all. It's your man, D. And look on this track. I got my man Courtland Pickens and no TR
continue today on this journey of black joy, understanding and celebrating black joy, I, I want to take a moment, Sanctuary, and say to us today that black joy is beyond this world. Black joy is not of this world. It comes from some place and someone else. Read these words with me from John 16 and 33. These are the words of Jesus. And he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. When we think about black joy and we think about black people in general, one of the lasting legacies of our people in the Americas and elsewhere, elsewhere in the diaspora is that our circumstances have not defined who we are. You think beyond the horrific experience of racism and slavery and Jim Crow and white supremacy and all the rest, our circumstances have not defined who we are. Our joy and our circumstances don't match up. Despite everything we've been through as a people, we still have joy. Growing up as a youngster in the church, I used to hear the older folks say this, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. And as a kid, I had no idea what they were talking about. But I've been through some things now, and I've seen some things now, and I can echo their, de their declaration that this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. And hear these words from Peter. In 1 Peter 1 and verse 8, he says, though you have not seen him, talking about Jesus, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Our joy, this beautiful black joy, is rooted in something, someone to be specific, not of this world. Our joy comes from Jesus and today, as we celebrate black joy, I think of the ancestors and the ways in which they have looked and had to look beyond their circumstances for the sake of maintaining their joy. And as we go to this next song, I want you to imagine the ways in which joy comes from something, in fact, someone not of this world.
sanctuary family, not only does joy come from someone not of this world, our joy is also rooted in faithfulness. Black joy is rooted in faithfulness. Hear the words from Hebrews 12, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. King James Version says the author and finisher of our faith. The writer of the Hebrews, uh, the writer of this letter encourages this community of faith to run on, to persevere, to not give up. And in doing so, he points them towards two parties. He points them to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And he points them to the great cloud of witnesses, the ancestors, those who have come before them. And he says they are cheering for them. They, they are encouraging them. And because we are surrounded by these witnesses, we ought to continue to run on. And when I think about black joy, I think about the fact that it flows out of, yes, our faith in Jesus, but it also flows out of the faithfulness of our elders. We have joy because of the example of those who have come before us. We, we can have joy in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of trials, in the midst of pain, because our ancestors, those who came and have gone on before us, and our elders, those who are older but still with us, they are cheering us on. They are in our midst. They are our guides. They are our models. They are our examples. Their strength gives us strength, and their faithfulness should produce joy in us. And so as we move to this next song, I, I encourage you to think about our elders, those who have been our models and our examples, and think about their faithfulness and the way that we are because they were. Let's celebrate together, Sanctuary family. Lift every voice and sing till earth today, Sanctuary family, I, I want to point us to the fact that we have joy because of the days to come. We have joy because of the days to come. We look forward with hope, with the hope that God gives, and that hope leads to joy. 
We look forward with the hope that God gives, and that hope leads to joy. Here's what the Word of God says in Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And friends, when I think about joy, I think about black joy specifically. I'm drawn to the endless possibilities of our young people. I think about their future, the future of our young people in Royal Hood and Mosaic and the numerous youth here on the north side that we want to be in connection with. I think about their future and it gives me great joy I think about the ways in which so much of what we're doing as a church and so much of how we spend our resources and our time today is so that their future might be different. I think about the opportunities that we have to create a world for our kids that is different, one that is not so broken, one in which the kingdom of heaven is breaking forth and it gives me great joy. When, when I allow myself to imagine what our young people will become, when I allow my mind to take flight, I find myself wrapped up in joy. And my mind goes back to the imagery of Romans 15 and 13, that imagery of God pouring God's joy and God's peace to, into us to the point of it filling us and overflowing. Black Joy says this. It says that the world is not all good today, but God still is good. And because God is good, we can look forward with hope to a day when the world will be made new. Let's say that again. The world today is not all good, but God is still good. And because God is good, there is coming a day when the world as we know it will be made brand new. That's my hope for the future. That gives me great joy. This vision that Isaiah paints of every valley being exalted, every, every mountain and hill being made low, the crooked being made, made straight and the rough places being made smooth. That is the hope of a new world breaking forth for us, but more so for our kids. That is the hope of the future, and that gives me great joy, brothers and sisters. You see that, that vision of a world that God has created for us, a world that is free of pain, a world that it, where, where we don't deal with death in the same way that we do now, where God has healed all of creation that gives me hope. That's joy. That's hope. That's optimism. That's heaven. And in the words of the gospel writer, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So I encourage us today to think about joy, to meditate on joy, joy that is beyond this world, joy that comes from the faithfulness of those who've come before us, and joy that, it, that stays because of the hope of what is to come. And as we flow into this last song of our sermonic spotlight today, I want to encourage you today to listen for the hope that is ours as the kingdom of God comes to be.
Hey, Sanctuary, and again, welcome to worship today. We're so glad that you've joined us. My name is Pastor Rose. I serve as Associate Pastor of Formation, and I pray that today's service has been a blessing to you as we celebrate Black History Month. And today we also get to celebrate and honor these two incredible women. Today is a special day, a day filled of many emotions. As we've shared over the last few weeks, today does mark the final day on staff for both Tara Hollingsworth, our director of Mosaic, and Shayla Weatherby, our director of Royal Hood. So today does hold a lot of emotions for us ladies, for both of you. And you at home, we want you to join in the celebration as well as we honor these women. And so I want to invite you to share in the comments section your affirmations of these women, your encouragement, your blessings, and your prayers, memories as well that you hold with these women as we celebrate them today. And their many years of service here at the sanctuary. And it really has been a significant amount of time. I mean, I think, Tara, back over the six years that you have been on staff here, which is a huge, huge milestone alone for um, youth workers as a youth pastor. And I just think of the monumental milestones in your life that you've celebrated here while on staff. I mean, I think of the fact that you started here on staff while you were still in college. So I know that today holds a lot of memories. So what are some of those memories that you're holding today? I think so many, for sure. Um, like you said, when I got here, I was so young. <laughs> and um, I think that, you know, transitioning has been really tough. But something that's kept me in good spirits in this time and kind of given me the freedom to know that, that it's okay to take this next step is just having the final experience with the Mosaic students that I didn't even know was going to be the final experience. And that was the distribution this summer. Um, just seeing the way that our students led um, just in the community and seeing the ways that our Mosaic leaders and the young adults and the teenagers um, set aside their own um, even ha had to delay their own process of grief on what our community was facing, and they led. Our students led this summer, and um, I'm just so grateful to know that this church has a group of young leaders, and that they are ready, and they can do ministry, and they know God, and they can show God's love, and I think after, you know, I could look back on so many memories, but I feel like it was that moment where I could say, okay, like they, they're going to be okay. And God's hand is on them and God's hand is on this church. So I know I'm going to take that with me. I'm never going to forget that. I'm going to take those memories with me wherever I go. Amen. Amen. That's so powerful. And as you think over these last six years, I mean, what... What has, what's been the biggest blessing from your time here as you move on, which you've shared that you don't quite know, you're still in this discernment process about what's next. So what is it that you're taking uh, maybe a little piece of sanctuary into this next season? Oh my gosh, for sure. I feel like too, you already said a lot of it. I've been through so many huge life moments here at Sanctuary. Um, when I was, when I got engaged, the first people I saw when I walked through the door after our engagement party yes. was Pastor Rose and Pastor Dennis. They were right there. And I, you know, I'm never going to forget that stuff. And having you pray for me at my wedding, like on the, you know, on the platform, you know, that's, that's so important to me. And Sanctuary being there with me in the biggest and most happiest moments in my life, but also the hardest, the times where I've experienced so much loss and grief, you know, the, somebody was just a one step away to, you know, hug me and pray for me. And it's just my hope and my prayer that wherever God uses me next, I can be a part of other people's milestones and I can be a part of people's grief and hold them through that and also celebrate just as intensely, you know, as I do, um, 
have you know people's backs in their hard moments. So I'm I'm never gonna forget that, and I'm so grateful to have been a part of a team like that. Absolutely, and we have all confidence that you will bring those gifts because you absolutely embody all of those things. And then for you, Shayla, while your time on staff has been short, it's only been about six months, you, though, and your family have been here at Sanctuary for a long time. It's been over 10 years. So I can imagine that today just brings a lot of emotions, a lot. It evokes a lot of memories over the years as you really raised up your children here. So what are the, what's a forefront memory for you right now? Yeah, it's, it's really surreal to think back over these 10 years. Uh, but one of the first memories that came to mind is when we were new here in Minnesota and didn't know anyone really, had only had recommendations from friends in Boston saying, oh, you should go visit this church sanctuary. I think it'll be the one for you. And so we have visited, have visited some others and then ended up deciding, yes, sanctuary is going to be our church home. And we decided pretty soon on to dedicate our son, Lyndon, who's now 10 years old, um, when he was just a little baby. And I remember being in Inwatton and standing up and telling the congregation, basically, like, I don't have any people, and I need you all to be that. And now to look back and to see, like, sanctuary is truly our family. Like, we have no family here, but sanctuary has become that. And so to see and to look back over the years that that was my heart's desire, and God gave us that desire and beyond is just overwhelming. Um, it leaves me feeling very grateful um, and is a reminder of God's provision and, and really ensures that he will provide as we make this uh, move again, take a step of faith and trust that he will do what he can do. Amen. And it really is a testimony of God's faithfulness, which I hope can be a strong um, something strong that you bring um, into this next season, which as you and your family move out of state, you're making this out of state move, which is huge. And that uh, presents this whole new season of life as well. So what are you from uh, taking from sanctuary, that piece of sanctuary with you into this next season? Yeah. It's hard to even know everything that I'm taking because it's hard to separate myself from what is me and sanctuary because we've become so embedded in this community. But I think one of the things I especially appreciate about sanctuary is the willingness of people to just be and to sit with one another in the hard and that people don't want to push it away and that people are really willing to journey together to walk through the hard times, to celebrate the good times. And the truly people here are really about doing the work of God, bringing his kingdom to this earth, working for justice, being anti-racist, not just saying it, but living it out. And so those are things that people talk about, but sanctuary is really about. And so I hope to take those things with us as we move to Tennessee. Amen. Well, you'll certainly have, both of you will have a huge part in our hearts um, as you continue on in this next season. And at home, we really want to um, have a space to pray for them. Um, we love you. We will miss you so much. We're so grateful for the memories that we've all made um, with you. And know that this time that we've had has been so special. And we love you so much. So let's pray. Lord God, you are such a good and gracious God. Lord, we first proclaim that we are so grateful for just the ways that you lavish upon us your grace and your love, your faithfulness. Just in the stories we've heard today, God, you have planted such intentional seeds of purpose in these women's lives. God, you have carried them through with intentionality. And Lord, we are so grateful that we've had the opportunity to, to know them, to walk with them and journey with them, to be in the hard and the good moments together, to do your work in partnership with one another, God. I don't know that we can... Um, say it enough how important it is to have these companions on the journey, Lord. And these sisters have been that for us, Lord. 
God, I thank you that you have created Tara and Shayla with purpose and intention. You've created them with care and love. And we know, Lord, that you will continue to do a good, important, transformational work in their lives and for your kingdom. God, we are just in awe, truly, of the fact, this very truth, Lord, that through them, through your spirit working in them, they have literally touched generations, God. They have touched the lives of our children and our students, our families, marriages, God. So we are so grateful that you have allowed us this space to be together in this journey, Lord. And God, as we look ahead at what's next, we know that these women are in a threshold moment. And so, God, we pray that you would journey with them through this next stage and this next season, and that they would be assured of your love, your guidance through this next season, Lord. And God, that we could look back and that we could testify of what you are in the works now that we can't see yet, but is to come. So God, we ask that you would just bless our sisters. Bless them with your goodness. Bless them with memories of, of delight and joy from their time at sanctuary. Bless them with community in the spaces that lie ahead. And Lord, we pray that you, your spirit would go before them, ordering their steps, making it plain and clear where you're guiding them, God. And Lord, uh, we just pray a blessing of protection over them in what's to come. So God, we're grateful. Thank you again for your goodness that we can see through these women. Thank you for the ways they have shown your love in so many tangible ways, God. So we thank you for them and their ministry. Thank you for their families. And we uh, ask that you would bless them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey.
so much for joining us today for our worship experience. Uh, as we wrap up Black History Month, I, I want to echo something that our sister Leah Fulton said to us earlier this month. This month is not, this, this Sunday is not the end of Black History. In fact, this is just a catapult. It is a catalyst that moves our conversation and our work forward. And so I pray that what we've been able to lay out for you this month will actually encourage your continual study, your continual learning and growing, your continual engaging in the things that matter to your black and brown brothers and sisters around you. Um, as we continue forward as a church, we will continue to find other ways to continue to bring these topics and conversations to you. And I pray that you would continue to lean in and be a part of what, what's happening here at Sanctuary. Let's take a moment and pray and ask God to bless all that we've seen and heard in this service today. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for turning our ashes into beauty. Thank you for taking the ruins, God, and turning them into something that we can be joyful about. Thank you for the ways in which you have reminded us, despite the struggles, of the ways in which you have called us your own. And so I thank you for everything we've experienced in this Black History Month. And I, I ask God that the work would continue, that the learning would continue, that the journey would continue all throughout the rest of the year. God, we, we thank you in this moment for our sisters, Tara and Shayla, as they conclude their time here at the sanctuary. We're so grateful, God, for what you have shown us through them and the ways you've taught us through them. We pray for them and their families, God, and we ask that you would bless everything that they put their hands to. And God, we ask for every brother and sister who is watching this service that you would continue to be their hope, their peace, their, their guide. God, we pray for those who are hurting in all sorts of ways and pray that we as a church might find ways to come alongside them and be a blessing to them. Bless our community, bless our world, bless our leaders, God. Help us to know that you are with us and for us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us as faultless before his glorious presence with exceeding joy. To the all-wise God be all glory, honor, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Sanctuary family, wherever you are, would you join me by saying amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>